Hey there guys, it's Lee here. Uh, welcome to another video of mine. I'm sorry it's been so long since my last video. Um, I've just been really busy recently uh, with work and business. Um, I've also just got back from a short holiday and uh, I've had a few other things going on as well. So um, unfortunately I haven't been able to make um, as many videos um, as I would like and it has been uh, quite a few weeks since my last one. Um, however, I'm gonna try and uh, keep a little bit more up to date and uh, try and make the videos um, as frequently as I can, uh, at least on a more uh, a regular basis if I can do that. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the wallet for a coin called uh, Nexus. Um, Nexus is quite a cool uh, blockchain technology. Uh, I've seen an interview with the actual uh, developer and he looks like a smart guy and he's working on quite a few interesting uh, concepts and ideas for the actual Nexus uh, platform. Uh, one of the things that I found that was actually most interesting was, uh, or at least part of it, was a dual uh, mining system or a dual channel mining uh, system that runs uh, for this particular coin. Um, so what it can actually happens is, or my understanding of it, is it actually supports uh, GPU and CPU mining and it uh, flip-flops between two mining channels so that's quite an interesting concept it's got lots of other innovations as well but I'm not going to go into those um, right now so in this video I'll jump over to the other computer in just a moment and I'll firstly I'll show you how to set up the actual Nexus uh, wallet um, and then from there what I'll do is I'll create a follow-up video which will show you actually how to uh, mine uh, Nexus so let's jump over to the other machine now and we'll get set up with the wallet first. Okay, so we've just jumped over to the Windows uh, 10 machine, which is uh, next to me. Um, I'm not gonna be capturing any uh, video footage of myself uh, during this part, just the uh, screen capture and uh, audio, uh, just so we can focus on the actual main content. So we're gonna be setting up the Nexus wallet. So right now in the actual uh, browser, I'm on the Bitcoin Talk thread for Nexus. Um, I'll put a link in the actual video description so you can find this uh, fairly easily. So it's just a regular Bitcoin Talk thread. Um, if you scroll down uh, quite a bit, the actual intro is uh, quite long. It's got lots of uh, different features, but uh, we'll keep going to the end of the graphic. Uh, a little bit more text there. And um, this is what you want to be looking for. So I'll probably put a direct link to this in the video description as well as. So we want the uh, wallet and we want the Windows uh, version. So I'm just gonna uh, right click and open it in a new tab just so we can stay on this main page whilst downloading the Nexus QT. So that's the actual wallet itself. I've also um, this is not necessary, but it will probably help you um, synchronize the blockchain for Nexus much faster as well. If you right click and um, open this recent database bootstrap, uh, what that will actually allow you to do is download a copy of the actual blockchain uh, as one single file. So I've already selected to uh, download that. You can do that as well. Um, I'll show you how to basically import that blockchain file. And it will just mean that the actual uh, wallet will get synchronized uh, much faster with the network. So yeah, select that and download that as well. I've already gone through and um, selected that. Uh, you'll be able to see that there. That's just finishing in my downloads, uh, 1.4 uh, gigabytes there. So if you do it this way, it will just be much faster. So. Uh, download the wallet and download the database bootstrap file there as well as I'll link both of those in the description. Okay, so now if you go to our uh, downloads folder, um, we want to extract it, the file that we downloaded, which is an Nexus-QT, and it's popped it in this little folder here for us. So we're gonna open up that folder uh, we've got one program in there, which is nexus-qt.exe. Um, and we're just gonna run that now. So we're just gonna double click that. Um, it's just gonna come up with a firewall notification. Um, we wanna allow it in private networks. You can select both if you wish. It doesn't really matter too much, but you definitely need to select at least uh, private networks. So we're just gonna go allow access.
and then this is the actual wallet from here so what it's actually going to start doing is going to connect with a few peers and then it's going to start downloading the blockchain um, so what we're actually going to do now is we're actually going to close it um, and just make sure it's not in your um, taskbar so if you just check that there and make sure it's actually properly closed and it's not just uh, minimized I will come back to that uh, let me just close the browser so we can uh, focus a little bit if we go back to our downloads folder and then we should also find in here um, the actual Nexus blockchain. I can't remember what it's actually called. Uh, where is it? I've gone um, computer blind. Oh, there it is. This one here. So we need to extract this as well. So we'll just pop this in a folder. So this is just going to extract that whole Nexus blockchain to a single folder. So this all should be in here. Okay, so we've got a couple of files. We're going to select all those. You can press Control and A, that selects them all, and then uh, Control and C to copy all those. Then what we want to do is we want to copy these files into the actual Nexus um, default installation location. So if we go to our local disk, which is um, C in this case, if you go to users, then whatever you've got as your um, profile name, uh, you want to select that folder. So in this case, it's Lee, or you might have it owner or computer or something like that. So we just want to double select, uh, double click on Lee for me. Um, and then you'll see another list of um, icons. And you should also see this application data uh, folder. If you can't see it, it's because you've got your view settings to, to hide hidden folders. It's actually a hidden folder. Um, so just show that if you can't see it and, it, and it, it will reveal it. So then you want to go into application data and then roaming. And then in here, we should see a folder called Nexus. And then we've got some various other uh, files in here. Um, for you, uh, you'll probably have the same files with the exception of um, just the logs, really. So what we're going to do is those, uh, the actual blockchain database that we copied from the downloads folder, we want to paste that into here and overwrite existing files. So we're just going to paste that. It's going to say replace files in a destination, which is what we want to do. So it's copied the blockchain into that local folder. So that's great. Um, now, if you go back to our downloads folder, sort this by name. Now, if you go back to the Nexus QT folder, um, you can copy this folder now to any, any way you want, or you can shortcut to it, whatever you want to do. Um, if we run the Nexus QT again, And basically the blockchain is going to be a lot further along so we're not going to have to download it using the actual nexus qt we're only going to do the final little uh, stretch of um, updating so it's just a much faster way of doing it um i will say with the nexus uh, qt program i've used it on a couple of other machines and with the blockchain being the size it is it does take quite a while to open on one of my other machines it literally took over an hour to open but um that wasn't as fast processor so there's some optimizations that need to be done um, on that, just in case any of the uh, developers are taking notes. So we'll just wait for this to actually open and then we can sort out the process of our wallet and address. Okay, so the Nexus QT has now just opened up and you can see on the bottom we've got this um, bar and we've got 8,500 blocks uh, remaining. So that's basically synchronizing with the actual network and um, yeah, it's only got a few thousand blocks um, to actually complete. Whereas if we um, had started and we didn't use the actual blockchain bootstrap, uh, we'd be on, um, I think, well over 100,000 blocks or something to download and it would have taken quite a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this uh, fully synchronize and then we'll just talk um, about the address function just a little bit. Uh, we'll continue from there. Okay, so you can see that our Nexus wallet has now uh, synchronized. Um, you'll see this bar uh, shows you the actual number of 
uh, connections to your Nexus peers, which are basically the other nodes on the network. And then you'll also see this green tick that indicates that you're properly synced up. Um, and that's what you want to have before you kind of make um, any adjustments inside uh, the wallet, um, just as like a be uh, best practice. So if you go, when you first actually create the Nexus wallet and also for most uh, Qt uh, type wallets, uh, once you very first run the program, by default, it kind of creates a wallet for you. Um, so that is also true for Nexus as well. Um, if we refresh here, we've got this wallet.dat, and that is the actual uh, file where our wallet is kind of saved um, into. Uh, one of the things to note is that it's not actually uh, encrypted or password pr protected. So that's something that we need to uh, be mindful of. Um, I can also show you how to uh, protect that as well as. So if we go at the top, we've got this overview, send and receive. If we select receive, you'll see that this is basically the address of our default uh, wallet. So it's got no label and then you've got this address here. This is your uh, Nexus wallet um, address and it is also linked to this file here as well as. So if you basically want to receive any Nexus or you want to do any pool mining or anything like that, you're going to be using this address. Uh, in addition to that, you can also create uh, new addresses and it'll just ask you for a label. So we just do new address, for example, uh, we click OK. And that will actually create a secondary address as well as. So it's pretty straightforward. And then you've got, you know, m multiple uh, ways to do things. If you want to pay someone, you can just enter their address, the amount, etc. cetera. Um, that's all fairly straightforward. Um, if I just go back to the overview, um, if you go to the settings option, you've got the option to encrypt your wallet. So what it will ask you for is a passphrase. Um, it says that you can use 10 or more. I think you can actually maybe use even less, but it's not really recommended. Um, but if you enter a passphrase in here and then confirm it, select OK, then what that means is that your uh, wallet file becomes encrypted. And before you can um, send any transactions, you'll need to enter that same passphrase um, to send any funds out from that wallet. So that's just a um, something that you definitely should do. Um, I'm not gonna do it for this uh, purposes of this demonstration, but it's something that you um, should do. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just actually gonna close this wallet and import my uh, wallet file, um, just to show you what the um, wallet looks like with some transactions inside it. So just let's gonna pause this for just one moment. Okay, so our Nexus QT wallet has uh, reopened. So all I did was uh, just basically close the application, uh, copy my wallet.dat into the default um, installation location and got rid of the, uh, the default wallet.dat that was uh, already in there, which is just a, an empty wallet file essentially. And um, so that's imported into there. Uh, reopen up the application and that's basically imported uh, my wallet. So you can see here I've got a balance of uh, 47.308894 uh, Nexus. I wasn't really going to read out the whole number there, but anyway, kind of uh, got a little bit carried away. So we've got my wallet balance up in the top left-hand corner. You can see we've got 30 transactions, and these are all quite small transactions. These are uh, from my mining efforts. I've been doing a little bit of CPU mining for the Nexus wallet. Um, also, just to show you as well, which is kind of a different from before, is you've got this kind of little timer. Um, and Nexus has a proof of stake system as well. Um, at the moment, I believe they're just doing proof of work, so it's the GPU and CPU mining. But over time, the uh, proof of stake system, which is based on people's wallet balances and the node um, online times, um, will have more of a stake in the future. Um, so it's um, it has this uh, trust implementation, um, which is based on how many uh, coins you have and how long you've had them in the wallet. Um, at the moment, I'm still learning myself and exploring those um, kind of features of the coin, but it does look really interesting. Um, so if I just go to transactions, you can see that um, I've got quite a few transactions here. They're pretty much all from the same address or all arriving to the same address and they are just for my CPU mining efforts. Um, and there's not really much else to say there. I haven't really sent anything out. 
So these are just yeah individual transactions uh, from my CPU uh, mining. Um, let's just have a look here. So I've actually got two addresses. So the first one was just the default address that was uh, created. Um, so I've actually used that as kind of like one mining account. And then I've got Worker Free, which you might have heard of in my other videos, which is the A10 um, 7700K uh, CPU. And that was mining on this um, account here as well. So I've been doing um, a little bit of CPU mining or across two different machines using two different um, addresses. So that's kind of what's in there. Uh, just go back to the overview. So I just want to give you a quick look at that just to show you what it, the, the wallet looks like with some transactions and just some a little bit of um, activity uh, within the actual wallet itself. So that's about it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, um, please don't hesitate to ask. And you can just leave them in the video uh, comments area. Um, and I always do try to make an effort to get back to people. So um, if you do have any questions, um, that's the best place to forward them. And I will endeavor to get back to you guys. Um, look out for the follow-up video to this, where I'll be showing you how to uh, CPU and GPU mine the Nexus coin. And um, yeah, I'll be covering that in a follow-up video to this. So look out for that. And um, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching guys, till next time.